I'm always interested in strategies for Italy in the board game diplomacy, because for most people, they're the least desirable nation to play. And one of our viewers, Matt Casey, contacted me with a unique approach, and he's had some success with this. Let's check it out on Legendary Tactics. All right, Matt, I welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming. You got it, Randy. It's a, a delight to be here. I'm really humbled to be on. Thank you. Perfect. So I'm curious about your strategy. I'm coming into this interview. I don't know very much about it all. I've got a, a hint of what it might be. So I'm looking forward to getting there. But um, you, you've you talked to me just um, off camera a little bit about how you like to use the online forums as a way to test new approaches. And this is a fairly unique approach or something just a little different that you aren't seeing other people using. Uh, so what is it that led you to um, testing the style? And why do you want to share it publicly on our channel? Won't this uh, sort of ruin your ability to use this? Uh, the strategy yourself? It probably will ruin the ability to use the strategy myself, but uh, anytime something seems to work, people figure out a good counter to something. So, and uh, I'm sure there's one, two or three counters out there that I've not yet encountered with this strategy. But what's, what's sad, and I'll get to the strategy in a, in a bit, is I've, and I may have missed it, but I've tried to find something about this strategy online and i i see it sometimes casually mentioned as a temporary sort of a thing but this strategy is more of a blood oath these are two people that are are care bearing it uh throughout it's masked in the beginning but it uh, becomes obvious uh, maybe at a point when it's too late or at a point where a lot of momentum is in place and uh the the, pos the position's formidable and it's uh unconventional uh, but it, it makes a lot of sense as you think about it a little more. And so how did it come to happen? I don't exactly remember the exact tactics of the exact game, but I was in a position uh, where I was playing and I was losing. <laughs> and, <laughs> Which is fairly typical with Italy. <laughs> and uh, and I was in a place of desperation. And uh, I reached out to this other power. And uh for whatever reason, uh, the power agreed to this idea. And so we uh, started working on it and we ended up winning a two way game and it bred just this. I, I had to play this way every single time that I played online. And so um, the idea it was, was working. it's working for it you. was working. Yeah, it was. It was working. I think uh, I'd have to look here, but I think I won. Uh, I won like eight out of 10 games, eight out of wow. the, the next 11 or uh, it was a very, very high percentage. And especially as Italy, especially right? as Italy. Yeah. Statistically, I think the, the least likely power and the least amount of wins in the game, either that or Austria, they're probably pretty close. That's right. Um, but it, the idea with this other power, it just one out of desperation, but two, just, I, I have a, a deep respect for the people that created this game, you know, and that it's just it, the game teaches you so much. You're, you're never um, not surprised by it. Sorry for the double negative there, but uh, I guess just sort of having a, a, a belief that the balance of the board was so well thought out. It does, doesn't make sense to me <laughs> why there should be such a disparity uh, in the odds of victory for, for Italy. Why do they lose all the time? It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem like it fits the balance of the, of the game. So, so yeah. if I'm understanding this right, this is more um, a way of approaching the game strategically than it is a specific set of tactical orders that you might put in. Like, do you do you have to open a certain way with this, or uh, are we talking mostly about a negotiation strategy? And you you said the word uh, off camera again, br the bridegroom. Could we call this the bridegroom strategy? I call it. So this is where I'm going to reveal to you what the alliance is. Okay, yes. Because I have to. So I can't put it off any further. Maybe <laughs> it's it's been too much build up. It's much to do about nothing, you know. And the internet trolls will take me down in flames, and I'll play the fiddle and all that. So, That's but fun. no, it's it's called uh, SPA, and SPA stands uh -huh. for the SPA is an acronym, of course, and it stands for the Southern Powers Alliance. It might sound inflammatory, but here's why I call it that doing the reading online there's a lot of talk or characterization of nations or powers as western powers or eastern powers eastern or central and powers. also central powers, central powers right that's right now today i haven't looked as hard for this because it hasn't fit my uh, my empiricism or my you know my history playing this game maybe there's a northern power i don't know but there's certainly southern powers and, right so uh, what if we split the map the other way because we often do split it up and down rather than left to right that's cool I, I haven't actually heard much theory on this so i'd love to so tell me more your anticipation is correct but that sort of geography or altering the map in that way is much more difficult to do though 
it is possible. So the two primary, uh, well, let's say the, the groom and the bridegroom here or whatever are, uh, Italy and Turkey. Okay. okay. Yep. And people, and maybe you've suspected that now that we got closer, but people don't, people see these two countries as natural adversaries that contest the Mediterranean. Turkey's natural expansion to the, throughout the West, of the board is impeded by Italy's presence. Right. So, uh, and there may be more favorable partners. Of course, there's the juggernaut, which I think maybe works against uh, Turkey because uh, as some of your other videos have explained, it's everybody, someone that's in their first hour of playing diplomacy, <laughs> they know it's this like boogeyman that it is really out is. there and sheer terror. And in the, the <laughs> instance, uh, someone gets a whiff of the essence of uh, the juggernaut brewing. Everyone loses their mind. They freak out. Nothing rallies a map faster in, in yeah. my experience than, than the juggernaut. And so, well, it doesn't when, matter if there's a real juggernaut or a, a purported yes. juggernaut either way, you're hosed. If there's any hint that that might be the case. So take advantage of that as Italy. One, sell it to Turkey that it's not in your best interest because of the things yes. I just said. Of course. But also sell it to Italy that you can use the juggernaut to deceive or stab Russia fatally with Italy in the Balkans uh, after Austria is taken care of. Right. Where, so where does this leave Austria then? Because I imagine they might not like if if it's apparent that there's an Italy Turkey alliance. So how do you manage Austria? Okay, so there's there's two scenarios here, uh, one that involves Austria and one that doesn't. But at the end of the day, uh, Austria is getting a raw deal. Okay, you you many people out there, especially old school diplomacy players, think that uh, Austria and Italy have to be inseparable. They have to work together. There's the Lepanto stuff out there, right? Which is so boring. It's another thing that everybody <laughs> knows about, and it. It neuters, if I'm allowed to say, or it handicap it, it, it limits Italy, and that it has to depend so heavily on another power. And you don't you don't want to do that. People don't take Italy seriously from the beginning anyway, <laughs> and so you have to make the map take you seriously. And uh, it's the Oriani opening that that you've talked about. So moving into Tyrolia and Venice, and then Naples, Sionia, and of course, I think is the most favorable um, opening there. So Germany and Austria, they don't really want to go to Tyrolia, certainly not Germany, right? Their emphasis is in the lowlands. They want to acquire supply centers. It's a distraction for them, for sure. It is a distraction. And, it, and if Italy moves to Tyrolia, it becomes uh, relevant on the map, right? Mm -hmm. it, it presents a fourth power neighboring Germany. So France, England, Russia, now also Italy. Uh, you're bordering Munich, which again, you can play in your favor what munich borders how many territories one two three four five six seven right it's very easy for germany to defend because the two supply centers are adjacent to it they can spawn they can defend so uh as i rewatched the video chris brand had mentioned this that the, you put the pressure on munich or you try to take munich not and i'm paraphrasing this and remodeling a little bit for me but it's not so much as taking it and holding it it's just it's causing chaos and it's <laughs> right. taking yeah. it's taking the power away from germany and forcing germany to to not be able to expand they have to they it takes so much energy and effort to save munich and in the all the while italy's making friends you're making friends with france on this you're making friends <laughs> with like you, russia yes. You're making friends with Russia on this. You're incentivizing England to play off of whatever is happening here in Germany right. with these other powers. So you're really influencing the northern diplomacy in that way. And it's uneasy for Austria to see armies in Tyrolia and Venice. Right. But you just you and and, and there's always a, a, a zag to a zig. Right. If Austria is not convinced, if you can't pull the wool over their eyes enough, then it, you're going to have some issues with spa. But Austria dies just as much as Italy. Austria is in a tough position. They have big problems in the Balkans. They want to trust you. They don't want to attack you from the jump. So they they have reasons to try to convince or lie to themselves that you're a friendly power, right? And by not attacking them in the first turn, the second turn, maybe even the third or the fourth turn, you have built trust now uh, with Austria by focusing on uh, Munich or the other positions, right? So, right. Okay, so... When you get the moment to take the supply centers from Austria, you then enter the conversation in the Balkans, right? And so you that's purely diplomatic. You're hoping that, that hey, uh, Russia and Turkey are doing something. They're active in the Balkans. They're, they're gaining footholds. 
Um, they're taking supply centers. They're making it tough on Austria. And, and so you want Austria marginalized. The weaker Austria can be, you're distracted on multiple fronts, the easier it is for you to capitalize on that with minimal effort. So that the lifting, the heavy lifting in the early game is diplomatic and it's not a tough sell, right? This is a battle that Austria has to fight all the time. <laughs> and so you just get Austria, you do your best for Austria to trust you. You incentivize the other powers to not, do what they already want to do. And then you backdoor Austria. Wow. Okay. okay. So, now, a lot of this depends on Turkey being on side. So what happens if Turkey just flat out says not interested? Well, that's the risk, right? And But here's the thing. You're Italy. What do you have to lose? You know, it, you're statistically, you die the most and it's boring to sit around. I've seen strategies where the armies don't move at all. And the first turn, you only move the fleet to the Ionian. You don't want to antagonize <laughs> anyone. You know, you're making no moves. And at the end of the day, you're just, you're waiting to die, right? Maybe you survive into the mid game, but what's, you have no, you're, you're a pawn, you're Vici, whatever, you know, <laughs> and you're right. used in a really, it's it's disrespectful. It's demoral. It's upsetting, you know, and it really doesn't have to be that way uh, playing it, playing as Italy. So, but that is the risk you take because Turkey and Russia could just follow through with the juggernaut and they could kill you, <laughs> you right. know, and, in, the, in the Balkans. Right. And if Austria sees you gathering troops and not following through and hanging around, then you may get a, a three-way uh, Eastern push against you. Could be. So th so there's two variants. You can do the Alpine move and you can antagonize France. And so Italy, Austria and Turkey work together. Right. They they bring the conversation from south to north. Right. And so the idea there is that you can stagnate or stalemate or slow down the growth of France. OK, you can commit one unit into Tyrolia and perhaps Austria goes into Bohemia or they send two into Galicia. But in some way, you're getting pressure on Munich early in the game in Germany and you're also getting pressure on Russia. So Austria and Turkey work together to put the, pr the pressure on Russia. Uh, Italy and Austria can work together to put the pressure on Germany. And then Italy and maybe a friend, perhaps it's England or something like that, can put a little bit of pressure on on France in the early game. OK, Um so you're you, you're hanging out. You're sort of a passive participant in the background. You don't get too embroiled into too many conflicts, but you're sort of waiting for an opportunity. So is this sort of an opportunist kind of approach? It is. You're you're certainly antagonizing France, uh, and if you can get away with it diplomatically, you can be in the area or the conversation of Germany because it's just so. Uh, you can you can just sort of hang out and be an opportunist there, um, but you could also right. you know be dangerous. So, but what you're really trying to do here, uh, Randy, is you're trying to uh, one incentivize England in some way to collapse on the other side, maybe be your friend. You're changing the geography, but you're also trying to get Austria to extend itself in places that it doesn't want to go because you're just using Austria, right? You're using Austria to be able to stab it after it's done the dirty work for you and you, you stab it swiftly with the help of Turkey. Right. And they would stab it yes. as well now. And then the, the other variant, I'll get, I'll, I'll segue into the next phase of this, but the, and then the other variant is what we were talking about earlier. Okay. Where you still move into Tyrolia? Uh, maybe you do the, the crusher, right. Is it the Bohemian crusher where you're in Bohemia, yeah. about Tyrolia, you're kind of lingering, but then you're playing the risk of leaving Venice open, but you could also have units in Bohemia and Tyrolia. And then you spawn the, the, the fourth unit in Venice after taking Tunis or something like that. I really don't advise going after Greece. You might be able to take it. It's very difficult to hold. Again, you become at, at the mercy of the players in the area. Right. And, you and that antagonizes that. Turkey too, because they often see that as their natural extension. Yes, yes. And so you use that to to your advantage, right? You to 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 be helpful in that way. So so all these and, and so all these strategies involve fleecing Austria in some way, right. whether that's, using that's them the, tactically. It, that's the common denominator. Different. Yes, that's the com <laughs> it's the common denominator. Uh, unless you want to play Lepanto and do it that way, which that's I've done that too, actually. It's a right. thinly veiled Lepanto, and then you're in the area. And then you work something out with, you know, Greece and the position there. It, it, you just, you and Turkey are stabbing Austria and you're, it's, you know, no prisoners, you know, with the stabbing. And then, uh, <clears throat> then you work on Russia. So th th that part's easy. You know, the part with the land is easy. The part that becomes tougher. And, and if I can transition into this is part of the reason these guys are seen as natural enemies is supremacy of the Mediterranean. And then the constraints of Turkey to be able to move westward because of where that's Italy right. Is. Italy's in the way. Right. And it's harder for Turkey to move North in that situation. Yes. There's a limited amount of supply centers up there. So in the mid game, you do well to converge together 
uh, converge together on Germany. Okay. And maybe you're swapping out some supply centers there where one's owned by one power and then it's exchanged and backfilled and that sort of a thing. You're really chasing the position on that front uh, approaching Germany from the East side. But the, where this thing gets really beautiful <laughs> is the convoy. Okay. So why not just use a convoy? <laughs> so you can use a convoy to get armies from Turkey out into France. <laughs> Right, okay. which stretches so, them a little bit thin too, so they're weakening their position, so they don't hit you from behind quite as hard. So you have this continuous. So one, you're not competing in the Mediterranean, right? So you're spending less energy or units or spawns on fleets in the Mediterranean. You're able to be more army heavy on both sides and do well uh, on the eastern half of the map and against Germany. But you'll also like of a, of a two to one ratio, roughly of armies to fleet, you'll have enough fleet to be able to fill the Mediterranean and then convoy armies that are on the back line or can't quite make it out to the front line. Okay. And you can convoy those out West. Sometimes Turkey takes Tunis. Uh, sometimes it's exchange or pass through. It's important to be able to get to North Africa oftentimes because the mid Atlantic ocean is one of the most strategic areas uh, on the map. And so if you can get there quickly and collaboratively with, with Turkey and Italy, that's a win. And if you can ever get an army into the back door, because usually France has some sort of a front, you know, with uh, Ruhr, Munich, Belgium, Hall in that area. So if you can sneak into the back door and offset the pressure there, uh, that's a big thing for you. And perhaps there's a negotiation with Germany where there's a ceasefire or something that's done or some side of sh some side of sh some kind of chicanery uh, <laughs> where you change again, the calculus of the map, but, but your goal there is to have a conduit or a vehicle or a path for Turkey to be able to get armies to the Western side of the map without taking your supply centers. Okay, I've even so convoyed an army in the Tuscany before because it helped pr protect my backside against France, put a little pressure on Piedmont. You right. Know, et cetera. Now, are you the minority stakeholder in this with Turkey being the big brother and you're sort of the support, the, the friendly helper, the, what can I do to help you? Or yes. are you trying to stay balanced with them? You well, you want to try to stay balanced. I think any alliance, uh, you you want to be even in the supply center growth as much as possible. Um, and that's it's 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 very empathetic and it's ultra care bear. And that especially like with Serbia or Budapest when you're in that area, or if you're looking at Spain, Marseille, North Africa area, or even like the Munich and uh, Berlin areas, you're going to come to to times where you have to work collectively as one entity, which is not uncommon for Italy. This is how they have to play with Austria anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's very common on common fronts with the juggernaut. So it's not a totally unusual concept. Um, but yes, I mean, you're vulnerable with Italy. If you really want to do this quickly and you, there is an element of speed to it because you can get bottlenecked in the Western med with France and England, if they are wise to this and, and, and nip it in the bud, um, you're vulnerable because maybe you run into a stalemate and Turkey's like, well, the heck with this, I'm going to, right. I'm I have some supplies. And obviously you, you, you proceed with some kind of caution, but, um, it, it's a great, it's a great approach because nobody sees it coming. Even when now, maybe the most experienced, like the people you interviewed last time, maybe they would see it coming in advance and they would be able to stop it. But playing this game online as a casual slash serious person who reads about it and plays one to two games every week, but you know, isn't traveling across the country to play a person, that kind of a thing. Right. So somewhere it's the equilibrium of serious and casual, but people just don't, they don't want to believe it. They don't think it's possible. They think it's just so um, off the wall and it's too late. It's too late at that point because you've already carved up the Eastern half of the map and you have the mass and the momentum to get going. <laughs> and now what, in terms of honesty here, like if, how much do you have to lie to pull this strategy off or can you be fairly honest with it? What's the balance so with, there? So with, with Turkey, I'm, uh, there is 1000% transparency and honesty. And, and that's part of the appeal with the trust, right? Like I, you, you can tell when you're talking with people, who's serious about work. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell, but some, sometimes it's obvious and I make it pretty obvious that now your most like skeptical diplomacy player will think, Oh, he talks, how does he talks this way to everybody, you know? Right. <laughs> or, yeah. Like, you know, this yeah. is too much, you know? And that's, th those are the intangibles of the game and no manual can ever teach you or whatever, you know, you have to have a good feel, um, a good feel for that. But 
Turkey's Turkey's my bridegroom, and we try to or what, however, whoever's playing whatever role, they're your marriage partner in this game uh, and this yeah. strategy. Whether or not Italy goes west, or they uh, hit Germany a little bit, or they converge immediately on the Austria, those are the three options. Um, now, do you do but, you ever get a separation or a divorce from your bridegroom at this uh, at this stage? Does that happen? <laughs> No, I, no, uh, it's all the we, way. You go all the way with her. It's it's all the way. That's 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 really what it is. It's from start to finish. And so and I think at worst, um, if you're just looking to get like third or fourth place and get some points at a tournament, this is an excellent way because you, as Italy, especially, I mean, you're, you may not get first, but if you can place. Yes. And so you might run into that bottleneck situation in the mid-Atlantic Ocean or Western Med where some decisions have to be made and then people either stay loyal and it becomes a three or a four way win or someone gets stabbed. And right. again, like there's so much incentive, Randy, for England to stab these people. They have so little to lose. Uh, and that's that's another element of it. You are just sort of whispering to England throughout this. Obviously, you're not totally honest with them. Uh, and it's more of a manipulative uh, relationship, you know, but <laughs> but they're there because you're looking for natural uh pincering right around around the map we're creating a pincer by wrapping around to the west and from the east we can pincer germany if we can handle france right we're pincering right. austria um when russia inserts itself into the balkans and then there's just italy and austria there too there's a natural pincer there you know so you're you're creating these pincer opportunities um, this, this game is such a war of whispers though but this this strategy seems like it would uh really suit uh you know the the person who's beguiling it would it would do well for them well and uh chris brand talked a lot about france being the first priority i think you know we're kind of backtracking i should have said something about this earlier now obviously i guess the alpine and if you're looking to antagonize france from the beginning they're just straight lies uh but but you know, you want, you want DMZs, you want them in Piedmont, you want them in Gulf of Lyon, you know, you want them in Western Med, you, you, anything that can favor if you have to throw in the training and see whatever, but, uh, and then you want constraints on that. You want to say, Hey, uh, you know, France, you can never build a fleet in Marseille. If you do, you need my permission. You can build army only. Cause obviously that fleet in Marseille is very threatening. <laughs> if you build it in Brest, you have more time to adjust and, and to, and to defend against that. So making sure everything, you don't have to be bosom buddies with France and you don't have to work together tactically. It could be, you know, the race, the St. Petersburg, as Chris said, or like, you know, you do your thing in the West and I go East, but wh whatever the nature of the relationship becomes, those boundaries and terms, uh, Marseille with the build and the DMZs, it's super important, right? Because now right. you don't have to watch your back and you're totally free to... <laughs> Uh, to do whatever, you know, if you have to fight a two front war, forget about it. Uh, spa is more of a mid game thing. You have to figure something out in the short run. Well, and this would be my only concern with this strategy is that you sort of marginally piss France off. Germany's annoyed that you're in Tyrolia. Austria might get a sense that they don't like you. Russia might say, hey, you're working with Turkey and I'm not in with Turkey. So you're my enemy, too. So suddenly, and you know, you might be feeling a bit alienated. So um, how do you manage that uh, potential for hatred across the board? Well, hey, you know, why does Germany get to have all the fun and the influence? They're a quote unquote central power as well, you know, and they have all these issues with two front wars and multiple things. But everyone gets so excited and filled with glee when they get to be Germany. And hey, I have so much influence and persuasion over the board. And look at me. Everyone wants to talk to me and I do all this cool stuff. And then there's this swagger and this sort of authority that Germany talks with, you know, well, Italy can do those things too. And maybe these people are scoffing or laughing at that. And obviously it's, I'm taking some Liberty there, but it, here's the answer to your question. I'm working at Germany gets to do all those things. I think, or believe not just because of where they are on the board, but count them. There's six supply centers there. Three Germany begins with, but then Belgium, Holland, Denmark, perhaps even Sweden, right? That's always a thing with the balance and what's happening there. So there's six to seven mm -hmm. right there. And for the truly adventurous German player that wants to be particularly reckless or experimental, there's Warsaw close by to you. They're very difficult because it borders Moscow. And et right. So it comes back to what I said in the beginning. There's just three supply centers in Italy. So I, these people have to be pretty pissed off and agitated to right. like ex <laughs> expend that much energy to take down little old me. And for what, That's for, true. for what cause, for what cause? And that doesn't mean it, it wouldn't happen, yep. but I, 
Switzerland's such a beautiful thing there, you know, and uh, it really, really helps you. Uh, it provides tremendous buffer and it makes it not only is it, it, it's just very difficult for countries to coordinate together to to funnel into you, right? That boot is so narrow. narrow. Well, at so- least in Tyrolia, the Austrians might believe you're going for Germany and the Germans might believe you're going for Austria. So uh-huh. you've got to know there's some uncertainty yes. there. And, yes. uh, and France might be happy that you're going against both of them. So there is potential there. Yes. So. That's well, fantastic. why wouldn't France send two in the Burgundy? You know, the conversation with France is, hey, you have such a, a gifted natural position on the board. Yeah. Ch- chase strengthening that position over quick supply center grabs, right? I think Chris Brandt said, well, Tunis is always there. It is, but you need, you know, you need power soon. If you can, tr- if you can get two supply centers early as Italy, that's a win, Uh you know, and it's very tough to do that. It's rare to do that. Well, it's with France, it's, you, you could get three supply centers in the first year and it's very easy to get to, right? The Iberian Peninsula is always uh, going to be there unless something crazy happens with England. Uh, there's always exceptions, right? So, but while unlikely, you know, what's likely is you could get a bounce in Burgundy, uh, which right. maybe you don't even really want that, right? Because you no, would rather because have, that keeps them... have that unit in Burgundy than in Munich. Yes, right? you would. So wonderful. So I, I'm getting a good sense of the the strategy. I think here, which is befriend Turkey at all costs. Be super open with Turkey. Uh, eventually, you'll be stabbing Austria. Don't worry too much about France, Germany, England. They'll do what they're going to do. Cause some chaos. Bide your time. Support Turkey out. Hold your position. Don't die. Is that yeah. about cover it? Uh, do you have any other thoughts on as we wrap this up? Well, you do want those friendly peace DMZ and build terms with France in the early game. And I would say England is a bit of a variable because they can pincer uh, France and Germany and they have some Russian interests as well. So there might be something for you. It would just all be situational where things are on the map. And so long as you can continue to stagnate the growth in the West and ensure that chaos is happening there in some way, you are getting supply centers with your best friend Turkey in the East sooner or later. And uh, you will then have the mass to be able to capitalize on that chaos in the West. And you make yourself vulnerable, but you've got nothing to lose. And, uh, you know, I'm speaking for Italy here, but obviously there's another half of the equation here. Turkish players should really do this as well. And I think that you have even more latitude as the Turkish player because you have the juggernaut in your back pocket. You have a few more options maybe than Italy. So, uh, well, we got to have a plan B or uh, C. That's right. We got to talk to Eddie Bersan himself, the uh, inventor of Lepanto. So uh, people can check that video out on Turkey if they like. And um, Matt, I really appreciate you being here. Um, If people like this kind of video, I haven't done the diplomacy video for a while. So if you want to encourage more of this, then uh, like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Uh, Add a comment if you'd like to critique Matt's strategy or add to and support it. Uh, I think uh, people always have lots of ideas, so we'd love to hear them. And uh, Matt, you get the final word. Spa, baby. Southern Power Alliance. (laughs) Italy and Turkey. Easily defensible. Not much to gain when attacked. Everything to gain when working together. So uh, Brilliant. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the channel. And uh, remember to get out there, get gaming. And Matt, be legendary. (laughs) Thank you, Randy. Inspired by you. Cheers.